All right, guys, we're back for another update on the uh, 2023 team. About uh, two weeks, two weeks and a couple of days out from the start of the season. Uh, the practice games just finished, the first lot of them. Um, so, yeah, I thought we'll go through the team. I've made a couple of changes since uh, the last <clears throat> time I spoke about the team. Uh, and I'm still, you know, obviously I'm going to change his heaps. Um, just, you know, you read something, you read about a player, and it's like, hmm, I really don't want to miss out on them. So, yeah, you know, it, it always changes. But I'll go through this and explain a couple of players, uh, why I've picked them, uh, the other choices. Like, yeah, I don't think this is, like, the the best team ever. There's still room for me to improve on, uh, which I'm going to do. You know, there's still a weekend of practice games to go. Um, but yeah, uh, so let's go through it. We've got in defense, Doherty, Doherty, Day, Yo, Bose, Caulfield, McKenna. Um, <clears throat> going with Doherty first, uh, I've got him in simply because I, I like his chances to be a 110, 115 type of player more than... Uh, taking a risk on, say, a Hayden Young, uh, Redman I've seen, like, thrown around a bit, Ridley I've seen thrown around a bit, um, and then where's the other one? Uh, Nick Dacos. I think Nick Dacos is the best of this bunch, by the way. Um, just going through these lot, I'd, I'd probably rank him, like, Dacos. Um, I didn't watch the Essendon game, but presuming it's the same as last year, I'd say Dacos, Redman, Young, Big Gap, then Ridley. Um, but yeah, I didn't really watch the Essendon game. So for now, I'd say it's like Dacos, Young, uh, Redmond, Ridley. Um, but yeah, so I like Doggity's just, I mean, he's not going to go under 109 like this year, it, unless he gets hurt, which with Doggity, there is the possibility of like an injury. Uh, you're just kind of betting on that not happening. Um, the, the report came out that he's kind of going to be trying for a 50-50 defense mid split, uh, and I think that only helps him. Um, he's a guy that, you know, Sard takes a lot of kickouts, but Doherty still gets a couple of them. Uh, he's a good he's good with the ball in his hands, doesn't make bad decisions, um, gets around the ground a fair bit. I don't mind him. Uh, I've also had, I think I've had all of these guys in at some point. So I started with Sinclair, so it was like, well... I'm just not going to mess around. Give me the best defender from last year. He's not going to fall off. Like, I don't I don't see any part of Sinclair's game that he's going to fall off. It's not like his athleticism, he didn't get hurt, so it's not like he, it's going to come down. Uh, Decision-making, well, he was good enough last year. There were a couple of games where he was uh, a bit off, but that was just a St. Kilda problem. Um, Sicily, kind of the same thing, like, there's nothing that I think is going to make him drop off. Um, he, now he's the captain uh, as well, so he's going to have a little bit of extra pressure on him. Um, but Day should be moving into the midfield, which is why I have him. We'll go on to that in a second. So that just really like opens up Sicily in that back line. Um, I can't see a world where Sicily isn't taking most of the kick-ins. Maybe there's like a couple that go to, like, uh, is Hardwick still on the team? Yeah, he is. I know he was, like, sneaky taking a lot of kick-ins. Um, I think it was just Hawthorne system is whoever's closer to the ball when it's behind is who takes it. I don't think it's a designated kick-out taker. Um, yeah, I don't mind Sicily. Stuart, I've had for a while. It's obviously the intercepts is what really brings up his score and his, like, uh, uh, potential and... The look of him makes him look a lot more like a, a top two pick. Uh, I could definitely see like Sinclair being D1, Sicily being D1, Stuart being D1, Doherty being D1, Dawson being D1. Any of these guys could be. Um, yeah, I don't know. Stuart, it's just a matter of like, you know, how's Geelong going to... I mean, their defense didn't really change. Like, they had an injury, so now Sava's going back there, down there for a bit. Um, we'll see how it goes. I don't see a drop-off from him either. So, say you went either of these three, you're good so far. Doherty, I just explained. The 50-50 mid-defense split. 
Carlton should be better this year. They were a lot better last year than they've been recently. Uh, I only see that going up. Like, yeah. Why would they get worse uh, when it's the same team? Uh, I guess Walsh being injured for a little bit could make them struggle a little at the start of the year. Uh, but I think he's going to be ready for round one. Or if he's not, he'll be in round two. So, I don't know. Uh, I think Carlton are kind of set up to be good. Uh, Doherty could very easily be D1 this year. Uh, same with Dawson. So Dawson is kind of a, a mix of everyone here. He's got a bit of athleticism, so he's kind of like a Sinclair. Uh, Kick-out taker, like Sicily. He, I've seen him take an intercept. It's not like the, the biggest part of his game. Um, it's more so like decision-making, which comes from like the Doherty side. But he's kind of got a bit of all these guys, and it's why... For a while, I had him just locked in, like, give me him D1, uh, and you kind of get the best of everything. It's this all-around type of scoring. Uh, the only reason I've moved off him is because I like Doherty's usage of the ball a little bit more. And I trust Doherty's team a little bit more to not kind of let him down, drop a mark, and, you know, just get smashed a couple of games. Like, Adelaide, I still don't think are there yet. They're still in their rebuild. Um, I think they're made leaps and bounds, especially with guys like, you know, Laird going crazy last year. Looks like Sam Berry's going to have a breakout year this year. Uh, they've got Miller back, who, I mean, I don't know how much that matters for uh, the actual team, but in Supercoach, it's a little, I guess maybe not Supercoach, but Fantasy, it's pretty cool. Um, O'Brien's kind of kept getting better every year. He got... I mean, he didn't get smashed, but he got beat pretty handedly by uh, Darcia on the practice game. But again, it was just a practice game. I don't think anyone's going at 110 in a practice game. So, yeah, that's Doherty. And then Day, uh, it's kind of just taken a bet on him. I've It's just one of those picks I really like. Um, if we go at it, he's priced at 65 average didn't play every game last year which is kind of a, a thing for me i like people that have played most games um i mean then i've got yo but yeah we'll t talk about that when it gets to it i think yo you just you can't miss um yeah so if he plays inside mid they could be i want to say about 550k he'll go up to um i don't see him not make it at least 100k at least 100k. Um, and I think Day could be a keeper. I think he could sneak into the top 8, 10 defenders, which, I mean, you you know, you go down to 10 is Brayshaw here, who had 100 average. So it's not amazing, but, like, say that's your D7. You're fine with 100 average D7, you know, especially if you started him, you haven't got to pay up for him too much. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I don't mind... Day as a pick. Actually, I I like it as a pick, to be honest. It's it is gonna come down to that second practice game. Uh will he get CBAs? Will he be playing inside mid? If he was just a wing, uh, which is what I first heard uh when he was moving into the midfield, I heard that he was playing wing. I wouldn't really go too crazy for it. I'm not a big fan of super coach players playing wing. I think there's only been like a handful of good ones. Uh, Josh Kelly is like one of them who played a lot of wing and then scored good, but that's because he also get the CBAs and everything. But um, yeah, I just I'm not a huge fan of wings and super coach. And say say he does play wing, I just drop him, go down to a cheaper option. Uh, like right now, I'm missing Gota, who I've had for a little bit. Uh, just kind of faded him a bit because I wasn't too impressed with him in the practice game. Um, I could easily go, like, go to over McKenna, who I also didn't like in the practice game. Uh, but McKenna's job security does seem pretty good, um, especially with Brisbane, like, really wanting to win this year. Like, this is a make-or-break year for them. Uh, they've, they've gone all in with Dunkley, and Neil's kept getting better, bringing McKenna, short up the back line a bit. They did cop an injury at the start, like, with... Um, is it Marcus Adams? I think feel like it is yeah yeah uh adams had like delayed concussion problems he was pretty good for him um uh, yeah that's kind of off topic so next one to yo and like i said i just think this is a no-brainer pick um this doesn't show me averages from 
previous years, but when was he good? I feel like, was it 2019? 2019, average of 107, 21 games played. Uh, like, if you can get some of this for 337, you're balling, mate. Like, this is what you want. Playing halfback, uh, <clears throat> whether you want to say it's going up or going down the field, he's going into the midfield. Uh, I've never really understood, like, people say, like, forwards work their way up the field, which is actually down the field from where they are, but whatever. Um, Yo, you know, should have that halfback and uh, midfield split, which is, like, what made Whitfield so good a couple of years ago. Uh, I think that's what's going to make, like, Doherty D1 this year. Um, yeah, it's that's, like, a extremely good role to have. Um, there's been a couple of midfielders also with that. Like, Laird had it through a couple of his early years. Um, yeah, I, I like that. I, I don't think you can skip on this pick. Uh, next, we've got Jack Bowes, who I think just should play. Um, not too sure on what Geelong's defense is going to be looking like, uh, whether he's going to play defense. I think he lined up at half forward uh, on the weekend. Hopefully that doesn't stick. Uh, I'm not... A huge fan of half forward players it's i'd say that's kind of one of the worst positions for super coach like stewart's locked in uh duncan's probably locked into a defensive area spot like it, either he plays midfield and goes you know just slides backward into a defensive role or he just straight up just plays defense uh i think those who are locked in two he's got a spot somewhere back there um the Coning was really good for them last year. It's hard to see him get dropped or anything. Uh, O'Connor comes in. I don't think he plays every game. I mean, he played 19. So maybe he does play every game. But he, he's he's a sub-type player because he can go everywhere. Um, yeah. And then, like, with the news of Asava going back, it, it, uh, I'm not too sure what the, the spot looks like for Bows next year. Um, hoping he gets a spot, hoping he gets a good spot. Not too sure on if it's going to be at halfback, though. Could be, like, him and Duncan swap in and out for, like, the, the halfback midfielder. Um, you know, one goes up to the midfield, one plays back. They are kind of similar. Not, not really. I'd say Duncan's a lot tougher. Um, and you put him on, like, a better player. Uh, yeah, I don't know, wait and see with Bose. If Bose doesn't work, then you can... Again, go down to Gota. Uh, if he like, you know, piques your interest. Otherwise, let's let's go down quickly. Uh, where are we at? So say two. What is he? He's two seventy. Let's start at like two fifty here. Um, we got Jaden Hunt. Actually, looked all right. He's a bit more expensive. Maybe it's just West Coast bias. I wouldn't start him, but I don't actually think he looks that bad. He's got an all right role. Um, looks like West Coast is going to be using him a lot more than uh, Melbourne did. <clears throat> like using his ball skills a bit. So I wouldn't be surprised if he like sneaky goes up about 200k to about 450, something like that. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Jane Hunt's not the worst pick ever. Uh, Crozier has been getting talked about a little bit. Not the worst pick ever. Uh, I would say this is like a plan C, plan D type of thing. I feel like Day is better, Yo is better, Bose is better, and I like Coffield better. Um, uh, but you know, say Bose is playing half forward, and you just you're not a fan of that. You could definitely go Crozier. Um, who else we got here? Uh, I think Flynn Perez played in the the game on the weekend. I just didn't really see him around, so it couldn't have been that good. Uh, but then I guess I wasn't super paying attention. It was a practice game. Uh, Liam Stocker, he should play, but I don't think he's that good. Aaron Francis, I think he was in like my first team, but that's just because I was picking guys that should play. And I think he does play for Sydney. I just don't think he's going to score anything even close to good. Uh... Liam Jones, another one who should play for the Dogs and should score okay. Um, let's have a look at... I think, good in 20, 19. Yeah, okay, 20 was his best season, it looks like. Um, yeah, if he can 
pump out a couple of these, like a 98 there. Yeah, this scoring's not the worst ever. And the dogs have really been looking for someone in the back line that can kind of show some consistency. Uh, maybe 2017. Uh, I guess 2017 he missed a lot. 18. Yeah, I mean, this is... It's fine uh, if you're looking for someone. Not amazing. Uh, I guess we're going down to when he's really young. Uh, yeah, I mean... He's a guy that could pump out a good score for you. Um, injury risk is definitely there. Uh, but I guess, yeah, if Bose doesn't play out, you got someone. Weddle should play, but that's a rookie price player. Uh, Michelini, uh, I think he looked good just looking at notes from Adelaide camp. Uh, who else we got here? I'm not really seeing anything crazy. Uh, it's either Sin Cotter or Kin Cotter. I didn't really catch the pronunciation of his name. Uh, he looks okay. I think he took an interceptor too. Maybe he plays. And there was also like, what was it? Uh, was it McVee? Yeah, he should maybe get a game round one. Uh, on to Caulfield. Uh, it, from all reports, what I'm putting together is he's got... Tom Stewart's role at St. Kilda. So it does kind of make sense that... Hmm. I mean, Caulfield's... I'm trying to think of, like, how to word it. Um, but I, I don't know. I just really like the Caulfield pick. So if he gets an interceptor role at 200k, you're for sure going up to in the realm of 500k. So we've seen this before. Players that take a lot of intercepts just rack up all the points it's a great super coach scoring mechanism uh tom stewart is like the, the peak at it uh he almost always averages over 100 okay maybe not okay whatever uh stewart's been good the last couple of years with this intercept role uh sicily does it as well and it really brings up his score sinclair was doing it last year taking a lot of intercept marks uh and everything like that it's the, the role you want. Again, a little bit of an injury risk with Caulfield, but uh, I think for 200k, just call him a rookie price, and you're you're absolutely fine with it. McKenna went over it before. Uh, I think he plays. I think they go going all in, so they want as much like experience in the team as possible. I don't know about them playing too many rookies uh, at Brisbane this year. Um Apart from like Ashcroft, you know, that that's that's a given. Uh but you know, in terms of outside rookies and stuff coming in, say like yeah, you won twenty three K players, I don't see too many of them coming in. Uh Jinbi looks great. Again, I think you have to start him. Uh he didn't play in the practice game, but as far as I heard it was just like a precautionary thing. Uh he's definitely locked in for round one. Playing defense going up to the midfield i think he plays like kind of everywhere like defense in midfield he can play halfback uh he can you know play a little bit not say lockdown role but defensive duties on a player uh play up onto the wing inside outside all the stuff in the midfield um yeah i think he's great player and a great pickup for west coast who really need young midfielders and i wish they'd play more of them um Cohen I've got in here, not sold on him yet. Same thing as like, uh, I believe it's Sin Cotter. I, I, the, the way I saw the pronounce the word, it looked like Sin Cotter. So Cohen should play. Um, outside of that, like you could go Wilmot, who should play as well, uh, but he's going to be playing on the wing. Like I said, not a huge fan of wing players. Let's just chuck him in for now. Uh, but Cohen should play. Uh, I think one of those two defenders play round one. Uh, so onto the midfield, which is like, I feel like everyone's kind of got a different midfield this year, which is great to see after the last couple of years of everyone copying the same, like five players. Uh, I'm skipping out on Laird for now. Unless something happens, I save money somewhere and... Uh, you know, someone makes room for Laird coming in. 
I just don't see any value in picking a 700k player round one when there's other options that put up similar score. Like Oliver's also 700k, like yeah, it's 200 off. Um, I don't know, I think picking both of these guys is just kind of setting up to lose a bunch of your salary space. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of picking both of these guys. One of them is absolutely fine. So say you just wanted Laird, it's fine. I just wouldn't go with both of them. I think it's taking up too much salary room for players that aren't going to grow. They're only going to come down. No one, I think what's the max price someone's ever hit? I think it was Gorn hit like 730, something like that. Uh, so like there's just no room to grow here. So that's why I'm not starting either, either of them. Oh, I'm not starting both of them, I mean. Next, I've got Bont. So there is a bit of a drop here. I'm skipping out on Neil. Uh, no, like, super reason for it. It's just I think Bont puts up a similar score for, you know, 20k less. Uh, yeah, don't really mind going Neil or Tuke. Tuke I only dropped because of the injury. Uh, he, there's def I think he definitely should play round one, um, judging from, like, the injury reports and stuff. Mills, I think, is a no-go for starting and a pretty good trade-in. Uh, just in the practice game, he was playing half-forward. Uh, well, not half-forward, but like a forward position, which is just so stupid from a coaching standpoint. He's such a good midfielder. Uh, I don't see why you would put him forward. But that's what they did, so now we have to kind of go off that. Um, Bont, I just... Okay, so worst case scenario, he plays uh, too much forward, it drops his scoring down to say 110, uh, but now you have probably the best forward in Supercoach. So, and in that time, that round six, he'll get forward status if that was to happen. You just bring in another midfielder. You know, it's like bring in a, a McRae, bring in a Merritt, Brayshaw, Hewitt, Cripps, Walsh would be fit and firing by then, Parrish is good, Kelly's good. Uh, wines, depending on its role, could be okay. Kind of like a smoky pick. Uh, Libba's good. Yeah, you know, like all these guys are good. So I like the Bont pick. I like the utility of it. Um, you know, seemingly a lot of people do it. Twenty five percent ownership. Uh, yeah. I, I'm not too sure on have, having him as M two. That's why I'm thinking of like a Neil or something like that, and just push him down one spot just for the optics of it and yeah, it makes you feel a bit better about your team. Uh, but yeah, I, Bond's cool. Like, yeah, he's the scoring is always insane. Um, it could definitely be M1, but I don't think it's on the cards for him considering like now M1 is like a one, almost a 130 score a week. So we'll see. Next I've got Steel who not going to lie. This kind of a, uh, fanboy pick. Uh, Steele's one of my favorite players to watch. Even though I I really don't like watching Saint Kilda, he makes it like fine to watch. Um, does everything, man. He can. He's got a good kick for a midfielder. Like Oliver can't kick. Bont's okay. Uh, Steele's pretty good. Tom Green haven't had enough time to see him. He's still young. Hop is not amazing. Uh, a lot of these guys aren't. Neil's not amazing kick at goal. Uh. Tuk is pretty good, actually. Tuk's probably the best of these four. Uh, Mills is you know, not good enough to be playing half forward. Bray, uh, he's pretty good. He's not. When I heard that he was playing forward pocket or whatever it was, I was like, what the hell? He's not that good a kick at goal. He's, he's pretty good, though. Um, I like Steele, you know, gets CBAs, tackles, tags which is kind of like the the negative to him he could get stuck on a tag and roll but you don't do that anymore um yeah i, I know i like steel that's that's basically what it is otherwise like you could go brayshaw who i think has a much higher ceiling for what is it 10k extra um and i'm thinking about doing it but wait and see crips coming off brown low year looked very good in the practice game from what i saw uh, Merritt, I wouldn't start. I think Merritt's a great trade-in player. He always drops at the start of the year. I feel like every year I see him drop. Uh, McRae is also good, like super consistent. He's been like Mr. Supercoach for years now. So, um, 
And then, of course, any of those guys I spoke about. Parish also good. Should take a another leap this year, maybe into like the one fifteen range up here. Um, and yeah, then you just got these guys who, Josh Kelly. If you like assist, if you think that GWS system is going to be better, and you like that, obviously a good pick for you. Uh, Wines, you know, last year was kind of injured in it. Yeah, injured almost every game. So. But he's a Brownlow player, uh, tied the most votes of all time, which, you know, say what you will about that. But uh, Boke's probably a little bit on the older side this year, Yeah, if you want to pick him up. Uh, I'd probably wait and see if he gets forward and then go from there. Uh, Lib is good, kind of gets underrated in the Dogs midfield. Um, again, he should probably get forward. Uh, I think he did he last year. I feel like he did. Maybe he just missed out on it. Luke Parker, again, wait for till he gets forward. Will Brody, uh, he's not the worst, but I just don't think he keeps up last year. Because a lot of what he did last year was with Fife out, and now Fife is back, supposedly going to be playing all season, and he looks really good. We'll wait and see. LDU is a big player here. Okay, so uh, the North game, practice game, again, let me preface, practice game. No one's going 110%. Uh, it was against Richmond. Was it? No, it wasn't. Was it? I can't remember now. I think it was against Hawthorne. Um, no, it was Geelong, Hawthorne, Richmond, North. Um, he looked really good. Like, he had 30 touches. He was at almost, like, every CBA. His, uh, you know, handling skills were superb. Looks like someone that's going to take a leap this year. Uh, even if it's just into like the 110 range up here, that's a pretty big leap for a fourth year guy now, something like that. Um, it's just, I like Tom Crean a lot better in this price range. So if you want to hop on the LDU train, it's, you know, it's definitely something that could pay off. Uh, speaking of Tom Green, he had 50 touches in the intra club, which is like, a, that's the headline being pushed around right 50 touches tom green uh you gotta remember there was no cogs no cali uh taranto and hopper don't play there anymore and it was against the gws second team uh there was no one on that second team let's be honest uh, a lot of those players that was the first time you've ever heard their name uh i still think he's that guy uh especially if he can do it like to have 50 touches means you're in the midfield a lot. Uh, and it, it's good optics for the team. So I can't see any coach saying, oh, okay, he had 50 touches, let's play him half forward. Yeah. It, like, the coach would even be thinking, like, okay, it was against the second team, he should be doing all that. But, uh, you, like, you can't move him out of the midfield if he's done that, even if it's a practice game. Um. Yeah, I know. Green should be good. Uh, I don't see him going under 108 average. I think min minimum this range he's in. Uh, we'll wait and see, though. I think he could easily be a top 10 midfielder, given the opportunity. Next is Hopper, who's another no-brainer. Should play. Uh, oh, should play. He will play. Like Let's be honest. He, he will play. Uh, Essendon. Um, Essendon. Too many teams, too many players. Um, Richmond's midfield has been kind of lacking the last couple of years. Uh, Dusty's been injured. Now he's basically just a forward. Like, he plays midfield, but let's be honest, he's just a forward now. Uh, Prestia gets hurt in every second game. Uh, yeah, Shea wants to be a forward. So it keeps it, it's opened up heaps of room in the midfield. That's why they've gone out and got Taranto and Hopper. So... Great pickups for them. Both of them are just going to slide right in, play great. Uh, definitely no reason to not pick him up. Yo and Hopper, you have to have in my mind. Um, in the midfield, oh, in defense and midfield, I guess. Next is another kind of like bet I'm taking on a player. So Windhager uh, is kind of like the Saints tagger guy. Um, you're just kind of betting on new coach, new system. They're going to remove that tag roll. The tag roll is kind of outdated. Uh, it works. Like, it's proven to work. 
only if you tag a certain way with certain players and you have players around them. Uh, wait and see what happens, waiting for the practice game. This is a guy that definitely could get dropped if I see him play in the tag and roll. Is a tag and roll, like, what did he average last year? Like a 40 or something, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, 48. Just not what you want. Uh, if he's averaging this, you, you can't have him in your team. Again, there was a couple of 60s, you know, 70 late in the year, 270s actually. Um, if he plays midfield, I really like the pick. Uh, I think he's kind of set up to be kind of a Steel-esque player. Uh, good tackler, good at hunting the ball down, sticking to his man and, you know, if his man lets up a bit, he can tackle him, get the ball out. Um, yeah, I like I like the pick for now. Uh, wait and see. And uh, yeah, if he's good, uh, I think his ownership's just going to skyrocket. Uh, Ashcroft, Phillips, Philippu, Philippu, I don't know his name. I don't care about his name. He's going to be a forward that gets game time, isn't going to score too well. I've seen heaps and heaps and heaps of people posting his under 18s numbers. I think he had like a 260 or something like that. You know, if you were to convert it to super coach, it was like a two, 250 or something like that in under 18s. But he had like 30 touches and eight goals or something like that. It was, it was not going to happen in actual footy. I, I really don't like when people show under 18 numbers and think that it's going to carry over because it doesn't. That's not how it works. It's a completely different game. Um, but he's guaranteed game time, uh, especially with Saints having I injuries in their forward line. Um, he's guaranteed game time. So uh, another rookie you have to pick. It's going to be a slow burn. You know, don't get it twisted. He's, it's going to be a slow burn. Unless he has like a game at the start of the year with like three goals, puts up a you know near ton... Uh, it's going to be a slow burn. Constable should be playing defense. Definitely a player you want to have in, even if it's just on the uh, chance to play defense. If he plays halfback at 123k or 124k, this is an easy, easy, easy pick. Someone that's going to make heaps of money. Uh, there's no reason to not have him. Uh, he was good at Geelong. It just never got game time, really. Uh he, when I'd see the reports of like Geelong seconds and stuff like that, it always have higher disposal count, high numbers, high efficiency and everything like that. Just couldn't really convert it up into the higher levels. Uh, now out of Geelong, should find some game time at Gold Coast. Gold Coast aren't the best list in the world. So yeah, should be some room for him. And especially if it's down back, that would be great for him. Uh, Chessa, he'll play that. Uh, I'm not even going to go into it. Yes, it says injured. He's fine. He, he's one of the better preseason guys for West Coast. Just just start him, mate. Like, just bring him in. I've seen people not pick him because of this. Like, it says his ankle. Just start him. Um, The ruck line has been, like, so annoying this year, I want to say. I've had... Ooh, let's see. Average. I've had all of these guys in from wits to... O'Brien, I've had it all in at some point. Started with Wits Marshall, because it was like, well, you know, just give me the best. Wits was good last year, give me him again. Saw an injury, uh not not an injury, but like saw his age and saw like uh well he's at the age where rucks start to regress. Um so it went down. Okay, give me English. English double injury. Uh two injuries in the preseason, copped a head knock in the practice game. I'm not starting him. Uh, went down to Grundy. I was like, okay, Grundy gone. Grundy should get, you know, reading the report, a lot more game time uh, as a ruckman, and then they kind of swap in and out. It's like, okay, I can do that. I can do that. Practice game comes around, and it's basically a 50 50 split. So it's like, okay, you're not scoring good enough in a 50 50. Um, went down to Darcy. Darcy is good. No Luke Jackson. I can't see what the split's going to be because there's no Luke Jackson playing. I can't see it. I'm not picking yet because it could be 
50-50. Down to Riley O'Brien. It's where I am now. I like the player. Uh, I like the, the team that's around him. I think their midfield should be a lot better this year, especially with Sam Berry, I think, having his breakout year. Uh, yeah, hopefully it's, it's better than it was. I've also had Lysett in there. Uh, he looked really good in the practice game. Like, very, very good. But again, practice game. See how it goes again this weekend. Uh, I don't mind it, the pick of Lysett. Obviously, I think these guys are a lot better. Uh, yeah. Darcy Grundy, English with Scorn. Uh, all those guys are better. Cameron. No, Cameron was definitely the first one I put in because it was like Marshall Cameron. Uh, he's, it looks like he's the forward and Cox is the ruck, um, which makes you think, oh, okay, I'll just pick uh, Mason. But he's not that good. At Ruck, so I, I could see that swapping a couple of rounds in. I think Collywood's fixture at the start is not amazing either. So let's just have a look. Geelong round one, I think they lose. So Port, they could lose. Uh, Hinkley's like playing for his job, so they could lose against Port. I could see them beating Richmond though. Um, I see loss, loss, win, loss, win, win win, loss. Yeah, like, it's probably a 50-50 start to the season. So, Cox could get dropped and then puts Cameron into the ruck, but then it could also go the other way around. Like, what if Cameron isn't good as a forward and they really like Cox as a ruck? Cameron gets dropped, which would be crazy, but, you know, crazier things have happened. You know, we've got the GWS team for the last, like, five years, which they drop and move around random players. Uh, Luke Jackson, I definitely would not be picking. Uh, 8% is 8% too high. I don't think he's a good pick. Uh, Draper, something came out about him this morning. Uh, can't remember what came out. Some, some news came out about him this morning. Just can't remember what it was. But, yeah, I kind of fade this pick at the moment. Uh, just for now. Just for now. Wait until round four or something like that, and then he's popping off. All right, then you make a switch. You know, and then you have like an extra premium forward or something like that. Yeah. Draper is not the guy. Okay. He's not him. Uh, he took like, he had goal of the year last year. It's a good start. Like Hawthorne, their ruck situations, whatever. Uh, Gold Coast, he did good against Wits last year. And then St. Kilda, again, it's up in the air. Like, how are they going to use Marshall? Uh, and then GWS don't really have a ruck, uh, it, like a proper ruck. Everyone's kind of like switching in and out. Melbourne, you kind of screwed against. Yeah, uh, I don't know. There's a couple of rucks here, but I mean, there's also the Asava ruck too, which that's ballsy to do that. Um, wait and see on that. Do not lock that in right now. Asava R2. Uh, just wait on it, mate. Just wait. Uh, McAndrew should play, uh, for Sydney. They've got Hickey injured, uh, and I think then Hickey's backup is also injured. So, just, I, I'd say start him. Uh, if you're going to start him in the forward line, if you want a, a, uh, loop here, I'm probably going to have a loop. I just haven't decided where I'm going to put it yet. Uh, I think the advantages to having one defeats the disadvantages. Uh, but yeah, onto the forwards. Dunkley, Rosie, Taranto have been locked in pretty much the whole team like since Supercoach opened. Uh, I've messed around with Cogs a little bit and him in as a fourth. Uh, just not so like, uh, you know, the biggest fan of taking, say, 100k out of Doherty or dropping Day down and then putting in Cogs over, say, Zeeble who I think could score relatively close to the same. Uh, but yeah, so Dunkley playing midfield, plays for a good team, kind of unlocked a bit this year. So he's not you know, playing behind Bond, who's like one of the best mids in the comp. McRae, another best mid in the comp. Libba, who you know has a bit of favoritism over uh, Dunkley in terms of the lineup. Um, yeah, I think Dunkley's... The easy, 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 easy F1 this year. Um, 
Rosie could take a, a leap this year. 93 average last year, playing full mid-time this year, you know, from reports, playing full mid-time this year. Uh, could go up to probably where Dunkley is, about 108. It's possible. Um, wait and see. Uh, Bud is another one that could take a breakout from Port. I just I like Rosie a bit better. Uh, Bud is plays a little bit too fearless, which people love. Uh, don't get me wrong, I love watching it. Um, yeah, someone that will just attack the ball no matter what. But in a game where you don't want your guy to get injured, I, I think Rosie is the better pick. Uh, just yeah, you know, a little bit more cautious with what he does. Ranto, same thing as Hopper. He'll play. Uh, he's not in a clogged midfield now with Cali, Cogs, Tom Green, Hopper. It like it was like seven, eight mids at uh, GWS that all deserved mid time, oh, like CBAs and stuff like that. So shouldn't get stuck in the the forward spot. Uh, can kick a goal though, which is good. So he had a goal on the weekend as well. So I like the pick. I think this is another no brainer. And Zebel. So. I'll show something, then I'll talk about it, okay? So, last year, let's just go over last year quickly. He sucked. North sucked. They were terrible. They were the only team to finish under West Coast. West Coast were really bad. I know because I watched them. I go for them. They are really bad. And North finished under them. He was playing forward line last year. He was playing defense in these two games. Why? <laughs> Let's have a look at when he plays full-time defense, even in a really bad, really, really bad North team. What's that, 21? Yeah. What is this here? Look at this. Look at this. He went up from 257k, which, okay, he's, he's 100k more now, up to 600k. You have to pick Zebel. If he plays defense, you must, 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 must pick him. This is a no-brainer pick. I would sacrifice one of these guys around here for Zebel. Um, and that's kind of what I've done. That's why I haven't got a uh, fifth midfielder, because I like Day and Zebel over an extra 600k player who might struggle to gain cash, whereas these guys are going to. Um yeah, like, you must pick this guy in defense, even go the year before. So this year, he kind of had to struggle a bit with Aaron Hall back there, who was having his monster year. Uh, I think it went one year too far. 20. No? Which, which year was it that he was... Was it this year? I don't know. One of the years where he was F1. Maybe it was 20, 21. Like, look at these numbers. Like, 33 kicks, 5... Uh, that's right, yeah. Kick ins, no kicks, handballs, yeah. So I don't, I never look at that screen. That that screen's so I don't know, it's done wrong. There should just be disposals. Um, but yeah, like you have to pick him. Siebel is one of the most, I guess, uh, infuriate infuriating players to watch because like he does kind of nothing. He's not a good defender. He can't lock anyone down. Uh, but he kicks the ball around in such a cheating the system type of way. Him and Hall did the same thing. It was kick to kick in the back line because we know we're giving up 100 points. Uh, I think you have to pick him. There's no super coach formula thing for, okay, team lost by 100 points, take their points down from players. So they could lose by 100 every game, and he's still good to pick. Sheasel, I've got in, rookie. Guaranteed games at North. Guaranteed games at North. Should play all 22 without injury. Uh, and you just hope for a spike game. And that's what will uh, bring up his cash. Other than him, I like the other guys that you could do this with. So where are we? Uh, I'm just having a look at this range here because I don't think there is anyone, but... No, not a fan of anyone up there. So, around this range here, uh, we've got Sava, who I have got in. Uh, same thing. Uh, not really. 
honestly. Uh, Asavi picking on the role change. If he plays defense, uh, he should just score good. I reckon he probably goes up to around 70 average in defense at minimum. You know, I do my stuff at minimums. So he should be good. Jai Mensi played all right in the Essen game, according to reports, or he's just had a good preseason. Uh, Bruce was getting talked about for playing halfback. Uh, from, like, I wasn't watching Bruce early in his career, but apparently he used to play halfback. Um, but he didn't play in the Dogs game, so I don't think he's best 22. Uh, who else we got? Maybe if there's an injury, you can bring in Bruce. Just, I wouldn't start him. Combin, uh, played for North. It's a super slow burn type of player. Uh, you can if you want to, but I wouldn't. Uh, McDonald, Tippin, Woody, uh, Oscar Allen. Okay, so I've had Oscar Allen the whole time, uh, and I've just taken him out now. Uh, for slightly cheaper, I like Sheasel. So Oscar Allen, the appeal to him is he's very, very good. So he's a, a good forward, takes good marks, contested marks, can play ruck, like switch hit ruck if Nanui goes down. Um, and maybe it's West Coast bias coming in, but we haven't had a forward like him in a long time. Josh Kelly, uh, Josh Kelly, Josh Kennedy, uh, was kind of doing similar things like a couple of years back when uh, like the Premiership and stuff was around for you know, Premiership chances. Um. But Oscar Allen, like, we haven't had a, a forward like him that can just, you know, take a pack mark and, you know, he's, he's a tall, physical guy. Uh, I haven't had something like that. So I really like the prospect of watching him. Don't know how good he's going to score, though. Uh, coming off an injury, his shot at goals good, just not great. Uh, hopefully that's something he's worked on. And if he's worked on it, then he's definitely going to be a good pick. Uh, I could see myself starting him over like a, a McLean who we'll get into, but he has like a bit of a shaky role. Uh, yeah, we'll, we'll go into it a bit. Uh, actually, we'll just go into it now. So for McLean, it's uh, hoping that he just gets best 22 time. He's got talent. He's been injured the last couple of years. Struggled to just stay on field. So if he gets on field, I think he makes 150k pretty easily. Um the only problem is his role. So in the practice game, they started him at half forward, I think. Uh, he went half forward, a couple of CBAs, like, you know, just balls up that side. He got a CBA or two. Um, then in the end of the game, he was playing wing, which, again, I don't like wings. Um, I like chicken wings, but that's it. Um, yeah, I don't know. McLean... I think you start him now because the the ownership percentage is so high. Uh, so it so with a guy like this who has high ownership but is a risk, if the risk pays off, you start behind the eight ball. So far, um, I felt this last year with Brody should have just brought him in at five hundred k or whatever it was. Didn't, um, and that's why my rank was so bad and everything. I still won my league. You know, shout out to the league, uh, but. Yeah, not not starting him puts you really far behind if he has like a great start to the season. And then Ben King is another one of those like you know, bring him in, hope he has like a you know, kicks four or five in an early game and just gets his cash gen going, kind of like uh, Tex Walker a couple of years back. And then other than that, there's just not too many here. Um, who did I have that I took out? I'm sure she. Yeah. Uh, Sava talked about hoping he gets defensive role, and then Fergus Green should play. Um, looked good for Hawthorne, gave him a, a a forward target a little bit. Um, I think Mitch Lewis is out for a while, or the season is it? Might be the season. I don't know, three to four. Um, I like watching Mitch Lewis. He's probably my favourite Hawthorne player to watch outside of Sicily. Um, but yeah, if he's not playing, then they have like no target in the forward line. Uh, if Fergus Green can give that for a bit, then it should help his cash. Uh, but yeah, that's about it for my team. Uh, we'll just go over a couple of like the high percentage picks here. It's not going to let me talk from here. Uh, coach's choice. 
Why does this never work? All coaches. Okay, so rookie Dunkley you have to have. McLean you have to have. Rookie uh, Taranto, Yo, Dacos. Okay, so the one I'm missing is Dacos. I think Dacos is going to be great. Uh, watching the preseason game, the defense mid split looks perfect for him. Uh, he's a huge, like he's going to be a huge player of Collywood going forward. Uh, if they want to get back into premiership form, they really have to rely on him. Uh, surprised they kind of didn't give him captaincy, uh, but maybe they will later. They're just waiting for him to grow up a little bit. Um, this is definitely a good pick. It's just for the, honestly, like the same role. I like Doherty better. Um, so say so I go Dacos in, right? He gives me 160k to use somewhere, but it doesn't really help me anywhere. So they go Winhager gets me to 427. Not can't do anything with that. Uh, go into the forwards. Say I drop Zebel. Okay, I can 512. What can I get to? Oh, 517. Not a fan of any of these guys, to be honest. Cameron, key forward. Tex, key forward. Himmelberg, playing forward. If he was in defense, then we've got a different conversation here. Uh, Dixon, no. Gresham, no. Bolton, Martin, no. Uh, Cameron, if he was Ruck, then maybe, but no. Then, yeah, like, a lot of these guys just not a big fan of. I think, uh, is Golden a forward? Yeah, so Golden looked really good in the, uh, Sydney game. The only thing I'd say with him is he was getting CBAs and Mills wasn't. Um, Mills is clearly the better player. Like, let's just put it out. Is Mills is, like, one of the best mids in the AFL, so, uh... I don't know if that's going to, like, completely cut him off. But, um, yeah, Goulden should have a bit of a breakout year. Maybe up to 100 average. Uh, could make him a good forward option. I just, I, dude, Zeeble could be F1 or F2. So, yeah, I, I like that. And then see, like, uh, it's just nothing much for me to do with this. Like, maybe I could go him and bring in Young and it strengthens the big line a bit. I'm not taking a chance on Will Day. Uh, which isn't the worst thing. I've I've had this in my mind a little bit, uh, but I don't know. I I like Doherty. Uh, it's probably what's going to be the downfall of my team this year, not having them in uh, going young Dacos. But we'll see. Uh, still two weeks till the season starts. Team's going to change a hundred times just today. Um, but yeah. Uh, let me know what you guys are starting, you know, any um, weird players you've picked up. Someone's probably got like Tanner Bruin and stuff like that who I've had in my team. Um, I, I might go Bruin over Windhager if Bruin plays mid, but otherwise I'd do like Windhager. Um, but yeah, uh, I'll see you all next time. Tasty out.